Welcome back to Excel-DashboardTemplates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel-DashboardTemplates.com so you're sure to get the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques and learn everything about Excel. All right, today is the solution to the Friday challenge I posted last week where we've got a sample set of data. There are dates in the data. There are kilobytes per second in the data. And we want to find out what is the value of or the average value of kilobytes per second in the month of May. Also, um, overall, what's our average kilobytes per second? So this is going to involve a couple of things. One is coming up with the uh, kilobytes per second number, um, as well as the date. Now, part of the interesting thing is there's lots of randomness. So you can see there's there's uh, underscores in here, and they're at random lengths. There's extra spaces throughout. Uh, also, the dates have some different uh, values in here as well. So like there's 27 of March and then there's 7th of April. You see the TH. So that's something we're going to have to deal with as well. So let's go ahead and talk about our solution. First, we're going to try the uh, kilobytes. <laughs> I think I've got this wrong here, don't I? Kilobytes per second solution. Um, first and foremost, what we want to do is uh, we want to find um, the kilobytes per second. And um, if you, you always want to go study your data and kind of see how it looks. And uh, I noticed one thing that uh, it seems like kilobytes per second um, is kind of bracketed by 2016 and KBPS. So what we want to do is we want to go in and find the length of where does this end and then also um, where does this start. We can subtract the two of those values to get this text string here in the center. Uh, then we can just do some find and replace, or I mean some substitute formulas to get rid of the underscores. So let's go ahead and give that a shot right now. So kilobytes per second. We're going to start with uh, trying to find um, where the uh, 2016 text value is. So this is going to be equal to find. I'm going to hit tab. We're going to find text. We're going to find text 2016. We know that's a unique string within all of the values. And we're going to do that within the text in cell A2. And let's see what we get there. So it's the 19th uh, part. Now, um, <clears throat> this is great. So uh, it's saying that 2016 starts at this position number 19 within the text string. Now, what we want to do is we want to modify this formula um, to add four more because we've got 2016 as four characters. So uh, starting at position 23 is where the first underscore or space is going to be. Um, so that's going to be something important for us as well. All right, now let's go ahead and build the next part of this. Um, we are going to use uh, this initial um, uh, formula here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight it and copy it. And now we want to find um, where does kilobytes per second start. And then we're going to subtract out that number of the 23 that we got from finding where 2016 is. So let's go ahead and do equals. And we are going to do um, find. And we're going to do, we're going to find kbps kilobytes per second. End that. And then we're going to find that within, let's do A2 so that we know our formulas are going to match up when I copy and paste those. Um, all right. So now we have. If we hit enter here, you can see kilobytes per second is going to start at position 32. Now let's go ahead and edit that again. And what we want to then do is subtract out uh, where we found that uh, value of uh, 2016. Oops, forgot my minus sign. Um, so 32 minus 23 is going to say it's 11 wide. However, um, this is also uh, we want to uh, not get the overall um, range. We want to backtrack it a little bit. We want to go backwards um, and we want to remove four instead of adding four. And let's see what we get there. So it's saying um, here in A2 between 2016 and the KBPS, it is nine wide. So let's go ahead. I've clicked in the cell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it looks like we do have the correct value where we're able to get the text that is in between 2016 and kilobytes per second. It is this formula right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And now what we want to do um, is we want to do a mid formula. So see, we're finding the mid of this text string. Um, so let's go back up to our original uh, formula and let's modify this a little bit. So we are saying that this is going to be the mid of text of A2. 
Now it's the starting number. Remember that's starting what we've got here, which is at uh, position 23. And now we need the number of characters, which is that 9. And that's the formula I just copied from below. And so if I end that parentheses and hit Enter, look at that. It's got uh, mid is of A2 starting at um, the end of 2016. Uh, and whenever it finds that in the cell and then we're backing up from kilobytes per second to make sure we're right there at the end of the value of our text string. So we now have our kilobyte solution. We just need to get rid of a few things. Uh, there's underscores and there are uh, spaces. Um, the spaces I think we, we probably can ignore by just using a value, um, but let's uh, Let's see if it works on all the range. Um, what we do need to do, though, is we do need to substitute these underscores uh, with a null value. So let's do equals, and it's substitute. I'm going to hit tab and fill that in. It's saying the text, and the text is going to be what we have here, that text string we're returning from the previous formula. The old text is going to be, quotes, the underscore as you can see there. And then uh, the new text is going to be two quotes. So that's the null set that we're not going to replace it with anything. And we have 4.970. There are some spaces here at the end of it. And since this is a text string, I really want to convert this to a value. And so if I just simply wrap this with value and end my parentheses at the very end, 4.97. So that is an actual number. And as you can see, I can affect it like a number by hitting um, some of the uh, increasing or decreasing decimals. So that should work for our formula. Let's go ahead and, and take a look and copy it all the way down to the very bottom of the range. And I'm just going to kind of scroll through and see if I see any bad numbers. And then I'm going to go check a few. 8.13, 8.13, 4.15. So if I increase that decimal, it is grabbing it correctly. Um, so it should does look like it's working, three, five, four. So there we go, we've got our kilobytes per second. Now um, for the entire range, if I just highlight this, down in the bottom right hand corner, you can see that there's an average, there's a count, some. So it looks like the average is 5.04. Um, but we can also do that with a pivot table that we'll do here at the very end. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the date formula. So if we look at our data, you always want to start with looking at your data. Our dates are, um, uh, they've got two different things going on here. So they have two, they end in 2016, but they don't always start the same. So you notice down here on row seven, it is seventh. So instead of seven dash April, it is uh, seven with the text of TH. That's also something similar you'll see uh, down below, like third, first, second, fourth. It's going to um, be randomized in there, so we need to account for that. So I can't just find the date, um, like let's say look for 2016 and back up and get some data there. Uh, also, sometimes uh, you'll see that instead of like, uh, let's say it was 9th of June here, um, or 9 of June, it'll, it'll be one text digit less. There's some random spaces in there, so uh, we just want to make sure uh, we're capturing it correctly. So here's what we want to do. Um, once again, we're going to want to find something that's unique. And as you look at the, all the dates, you'll notice that the dash is something that's unique, and it really does help us get our data. So what we're going to do is we're going to say equals, and we're going to look um, or do a find. And we're going to look find for text that dash. And we're going to do that with in text of A2. And let's go ahead and take a look at what that gives us. Oops, we've got, uh, let's do a text format here so we can see exactly what it's getting. Um, <clears throat> or number format, I guess I should have done. So it is cell uh, 14, or uh, position 14 within the string. So if I double click within the string, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it's holding the 14th position in here. Now that's great. What I want to do is I'm going to break up um, our formula into two variants. One, we're going to have it where our date is correct and we can just grab that date. And then two, I'm going to create a variant where um, we're going to recombine, break apart and recombine the date by starting at this dash and grabbing everything to the right. And then um, also 
uh, grabbing everything to the left over here and converting that back into a, a number value. So let me show you how we go about doing that. So the first thing we have to do is find that first position of the dash. Now that we have that, um, what we want to do is we want to we want to fix this for our uh, first variance. So now that we know we're here at this dash, I need to reverse my position two numbers. So right, so that we can grab the 27 here, and we're going to use that in a mid function. So we're going to type in mid, and it's going to say our text. We want this to be a two, and our starting number is uh, what we just developed, where that first dash is. But remember, we need to back that up too. So I'm going to remove that. Uh, move the uh, position over two to the left by doing a minus two. Um, and then once we get there, what we want to do is grab the entire date. So we're here and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's eleven characters within this date uh, value here. So we're just going to type in eleven and end our parentheses and let's see what we get. So our first variant, we are able to get. Um, the correct dates. Now, once we get to row seven, you'll notice that we have a problem. TH April 2016. This is our other variant that we need to account for. And we're going to do that by um, essentially using the same function. But in this case, we're going to break it up into uh, a couple of different uh, items that we do know that from the dash, we can go backwards for and grab that number and just grab those first two digits of that. So let's see how that works. And we're going to do that um, on the cell right here uh, that you can see the data um, position for you. So once again, we're going to use the mid function. We're going to find that first dash. And instead of backing up two, I'm going to remove this because we want to start right where that dash is. We're going to grab everything to the right of that. So I'm going to delete that minus two. And now that we don't have to go back to um, to end here at 2016 instead of 11, we only need nine um, more characters. So let's hit type in that. And you can see we now have the start of our formula. That grabs the right hand side of our text string. Now we want to grab the left side of our text string. So let's go ahead and do that um, in one cell below. Let's just go ahead and copy this formula out here. And uh, we'll start that in the cell below. So equals and typing in that formula by doing a control V for paste. So first off, uh, within cell A7, we're going to find that dash. And we do actually, at this point in time, we want to go backwards for cells, so our four uh, positions. So we're here at this dash. We want to go one, two, three, four. We want to go four because we want to incorporate in case there's a zero seven or a zero one. In our case right here, it just says seventh. Um, so uh, having that space in there is not a problem, but we want to go our move our cursor position back four. So that's why we're doing that minus four. And we only want to grab two digits, so or the left two most um, values. So in any case, you will see it's grabbing the, just the number seven. Now, we just want to go and recombine these two formulas. So I'm going to copy this formula here. I'm going to go back up to my previous cell. And what I want to do here is add it at the very beginning. I'm going to do Control V to paste it. Just simply going to put an ampersand in between those two uh, formulas and hit enter. And you can now see it as 7 of April of 2016. Now that's great. However, um, it's actually just a text string still. It's uh, not um, an actual date yet, um, or at least uh, it, it may work out as a date right now. But uh, we need to combine these two formulas that we have here um, into one. And so to do that, we are going to wrap this around uh, of some value functions. And uh, we're going to put that inside an if error statement. So let's go ahead and grab this formula that we just created. And uh, we're going to go up to our formula in cell B2. And so we are saying that uh, we've got our original value if there is just 11 digits that we can create the date from. And uh, first, what we want to do is we want to do an if error. And so I like to use if error to say, uh, if this here is an error, um, go ahead and do another operation if you find that it returns like pound value, pound NA, those sorts of things. Um, however, this is just text right now. So there's it's not really checking to see or will never return an error typically. Um, however, we do want to make this a real date value. So I'm just going to type in our value function and hit tab. 
it's going to do a value on this text string, and I'll end my parentheses. So this is what we're checking for. So the if error says, hey, if this formula right here returns an error, then comma, I want to show a different formula if it is an error, and that's where I'm going to do another value formula, and I'm going to uh, put in that function that we copied from below. Now it looks like I have, um, um, since we're in A2, um, you can see my references are for A7 down here. I'm just going to drag all of these up to A2 so that we can finalize our formula and make sure it's all acting on the same cell and uh, end my value function, end my if error, and uh, hit enter. And you can see it's got a funky number in there because that is actually a date. Uh, Excel uses numbers as dates, and there you go. We have March 27th of 2016. If I highlight in the, the uh, fill bar and move this down, you'll see down here on April 7th, it is calculating, a, calculating that as a date as well. So let's uh, expand this all the way down to the bottom and kind of look through some of our data. Um, let's see, October 16th, October 16th, we've got uh, that one working correctly. Uh, here's the 26th of August, and that's working correctly. So everything's looking pretty good. Now we just need to find our solutions. Uh, and so I'm going to highlight the range of data. I'm going to do Alt-D pivot table and put it on a new spreadsheet. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and do, or actually we'll just put it in this spreadsheet right here, this existing spreadsheet just below uh, where we can see it. And I'm going to modify the pivot table for the solution uh, KBPS as values and date in our row labels. I'm going to change the sum to value field setting. Instead, we want that to be an average. And we're going to click on closing that out. I just want to right click here on my dates and group them. And we're going to group them by months. Click on OK. And so you can see uh, May's uh, value was 5.181. And the grand total, our um, average kilobytes usage is 5.0423. So hopefully you found uh, this interesting on how you can break up data with different text functions, uh, if functions, value functions, um, as well as uh, substitute, where you can uh, take some data out uh, of your text strings and replace them to get the data that you're ultimately looking for. Um, once again, this is Steve Equals True. Please head on over to Excel Dashboard Templates to download this solution file. Also, please subscribe to my video channel so that you're sure to get the next post delivered directly to your inbox. Thank you.